Annyeong! Welcome to Delightful! Today's evolution is Leafeon, the verdant Pokemon. I briefly glossed over my concept process with the Eevee doll, so this time I want to talk about it a bit more. I wasn't too familiar with this Pokemon because it came along in the generation of games and TV shows that I missed out on for some reason, so I wanted to get to know it first in order to accurately capture its personality, as I tried to do with Eevee and Sylveon. So I bred an Eevee in Pokemon Sun, leveled her up, and eventually had a Leafeon. And I must admit, she's stolen my heart a little bit. So I had two directions for designing her as a doll. The first, as you can see, is more of an outdoorsy girl, gardener type of character, which I thought fits the Pokemon pretty well. The other two drawings are more inspired by nature itself, resembling more of a nature spirit, if you will. I thought long and hard about it and ended up choosing the latter because the gardener take on Leafeon looks a tad similar to Eevee and who doesn't love a leafy kimono? The hair was also a tough choice. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go for a contrasting brown hue or something monochromatic. Once again, you folks on Instagram stepped in with your great opinions and the consensus was overwhelmingly positive for the bob. With the concept worked out, I can start the doll. I will be making this Pokemon today by combining a Monster High Frankie head with an Ever After High Blondie Locks body. Frankie's face shape seems to match the Pokemon's artwork fairly well. And why I chose an Ever After High body? Well, I wanted to choose a skin tone as similar as possible to my desired body color so that when the paint inevitably rubs off, particularly around the joints, it won't be too noticeable. Also, I just really like the Ever After High bodies. First things first, we need to color these parts to match the beige and browns seen in Leafeon's design. I used the Vallejo Game Air paints, and so far they've worked perfectly for me. They're already cut with water at the correct ratio so that your airbrush won't clog up. I know it seems odd paying for watered-down paint, but if it saves me some frustration of cleaning this finicky device, then it's worth it. I make sure they dry thoroughly between coats, say a couple hours, before adding another one. It took me about three coats to get this opaqueness. And afterwards, I sealed both the head and the body with Mr. Super Clear sealant in hopes that it wouldn't rub off too bad. Fingers crossed! And yes, that looks really freaky. <laughs> While the body is drying, let's make the kimono. I start by sewing a simple knit tube top onto a skirt with a scalloped edge. Now's the fun part, harvesting silk leaves from your home decor and hot gluing them on the skirt. I feathered and layered mine from bottom to top with smaller leaves towards the top. If the leaves aren't perfect, give them a trim and shape them to your aesthetic. I rounded off some of the pointier bits. To make the decorative tassel, I cut three thin strips of the same knit and string them together through a bead using embroidery thread. I chose a brown cotton fabric for the kimono top and tried to get fancy with some embroidery. I was going for leaves, but it just sort of looks like a geometric design. I guess that's cool too. The hardest part about this jacket is that I wanted to line it, which basically means making an interior kimono piece and attaching them so that the inside of the kimono also looks pretty and finished. You know, like what they do with winter coats and stuff. I was winging it, as usual, and ended up having to force things into place via hand stitching. Basically fudging it and hoping no one notices! If you want some actual tips on how to line something, I'll put some links below. While we're at it, let's make the ears and tail. Leafeon's ear and tail bits are flat, like leaves, so we're not going to stuff them this time. All I want to do is make a wire frame in the shape of the veins of the leaf, sew and turn a cotton fabric casing in the same shape, and then hand stitch down and around all that wire to give me a very poseable and flat leaf shape. All right, so I know I can go a little overboard sometimes and occasionally make things more difficult than they could be. So if pinning fabric around wires while staring into a lamp isn't for you, here's a simpler approach. Try gluing a single strong wire in between two sheets of leaf shaped paper for a similar result.
I'll be using blonde nylon doll hair from dollyhair.com in my trusty drill bit and needle rerouting tool for this reroute. If only rerouting was as easy as video editing makes it seem. Seriously, I was super distracted during this custom, so it took me like four days to reroute the hair. If you have a massive chasm in the doll's head like this, just take a needle and thread and stitch it up. Neat trick I saw over at Dollmotion's channel. Once all that baldness is filled in, make a super thick row of plugs to form the part. I want to give Letheon this strip of green to represent the leafy thing on her head, but the closest green I have is this mint color. Taking a small hank, I rub the chalk all up in there and mush it around to cover all the strands. I wipe it down with some paper towel, and I even ran it under water and wiped it off until it came clean. I honestly expected everything to wash out, but what do you know? It seems like you really can tint a doll's hair at least a few shades darker with chalk pastels. To make sure those plugs aren't going anywhere, I'm taking Fabri-Tac glue and squirting it into the head, feeling around to ensure the glue touches all those plugs, especially the thick part. As usual, all the materials can be found in the description box below. And if you want a really thorough video about it, I made one called All Materials for Doll Customizing. Alright, so the reroute's done, and the skin doesn't quite match the hair. It's a little too green. I thought I would be okay with it, but I'm not. So I'm going to mask off the hair, airbrush her a little more, and seal her again with MSC. I'll be right back. Face up time. Leafeon's eyes are also brown with a touch of orange, which I picked up on and implemented in her outfit as well. So I'm blushing her cheeks, forehead, lips, and nose with a warm orange. Next, I sketch in her almond-shaped eyes with a brown watercolor pencil. While I'm drawing, I'd like to take this time to say thank you all for watching and commenting on my past videos. I love hearing what you guys have to say and chatting with you in the comment section. Call me biased, but I think the toy loving community is one of the best on YouTube. I've done a face up on two dolls now with airbrushed faces, and found that pencils won't take you as far, so just like Sylveon and the mermaid, I'm switching to acrylics fairly early on. I block in her iris and the whites of the eyes before bringing in a darker brown to shade and add definition. I love the small blob-shaped eyebrows, but her face up just didn't feel finished, so I decided to extend her brows and add a shift to brown to make her face more interesting. And of course, lastly, the eye shine. After the last coat of Mr. Super Clear sealant, I use Liquitex High Gloss Varnish to make the lips and waterline appear wet. Make sure you follow those instructions or it'll become gummy and kind of gross. I know it's hard to wait. After taking her hair down and stopping her head on a pike. <laughs> Sorry, I wrote that in my script and it was like fine when I wrote it out, but now that I'm saying it. Anyway, it's time to create the hairstyle. Using three large straws and a couple of bobby pins, we create curlers to set the hair. I would suggest shielding the face if you can, but I got a little lazy. Pour boiling water over the nylon curls to set the hairstyle. Let her dry overnight. Once she is dry, you can take down her hair and trim the excess. Oh, it's so bouncy. To attach the tail, I had been wrapping them around the waist and out of sight under the clothing, but I made her dress too tight, so there's no room under there. Instead, I got out my hand drill and made a wire-sized hole through the body. <laughs> then, using epoxy glue, I securely adhered the wire in place. This makes the tail permanent, of course, but to be honest, I think it looks way better. Despite my best efforts to be delicate and careful, the body paint job is scratching off way too easily. 
So I actually got the airbrush back out again and patched some parts on her legs before sealing everything with three layers of DuraClear matte varnish instead of Mr. Super Clear. The last thing to add before her head can go back on is the ears. I part her hair and insert the prongs into existing hair plug holes. Using the same pliers, I go in through the neck hole to mash the wires against the inside of the head, providing stability. Finally, her head can go back on! And if you're curious, Monster High and Ever After High have the same neck thickness, so switching heads is a piece of cake. Unless you push too hard and... <laughs> okay, that's better. Leafeon was a lot of fun, and I'm really glad I went with the bob. I think it's super cute, and it's good to have a variety in the Evolution series. I mean, I know Sylveon has a pixie cut, but some of the next dolls are definitely going to have long hair. It's good to think about the group as a whole in the future. I can't wait to have all of them done. The photo shoot is going to be so much fun. Oh yeah, and to clear up some confusion on who's next, those of you who follow me on Instagram already put in your 663 collective votes on the order of the dolls, so that was decided a long time ago. To be more involved and help me choose designs for the next Evolutions, feel free to follow me on Instagram at Delightfully. Thank you so much for watching as our Pokemon adventure continues. It's a beautiful sunny day, so the four of us are going to have a picnic by Leafeon's favorite mossy rock. We'll catch you next time! Stay artsy! Annyeong!